welcome back guys to the continuation of uh, derivatives of transcendental functions we are now in exponential and logarithmic functions so let's begin let's start uh, let's begin first with exponential functions so we have actually two uh, rules we have d15 and d16 for exponential functions so first let's have the derivative of e raised to the power of u so we have the natural number here or the Euler's number so the derivative of e to the power of u our u is the uh, function here is just e to the power of u times du dx so let's have an example so for example we have the derivative of e to the power of 2x minus 1 so you'll get e to the power of 2x minus 1 so you're just going to copy the given and then get the derivative of the exponent which is 2x minus 1 which is 2 okay the derivative is 2 and then we rearrange in such a way that the constants are or numerical coefficients are at the left so we have 2 times e raised to the power of 2x minus 1 and this is our derivative and then we have of course if we have e to the power of u we have also a to the power of u what is a here a is any number okay any number number aside from actually it's not any number such as any number it is actually considered to be greater than uh, zero it's greater than zero uh, because that's the definition of exponential function so we have a to the power of u the derivative of a to the power of u is simply a to the power of u ln of a du dx okay so example we have 4 raised to the power of 2x minus 1 so again we simply copy the given and then here so unlike e to the power of u we have ln a or the natural log of a so we have ln our a here is 4, our base rather, this is actually base, a is base. So ln of 4, then get the derivative of 2x minus 1, which is the exponent, which is 2. Okay, then we arrange. So take note that ln of 4 is a constant. So that's why we have 2 ln of 4 times 4 to the power of 2x minus 1. Okay, so let's have the proof for this. Why is this true? So let's start with e to the power of x and we'll use the limit definition to prove this. So we have e to the power of x plus h for f of x plus h and e to the power of x for f of x. Let's take note since this is an exponent, x plus h is an exponent, so we can apply the loss of exponent here and this is equivalent to e to the power of x times e to the power of h. Okay, then we factor out the common factor which is e to the power of x and take note we have e to the power of h minus 1 over h okay so we can actually get the limit of that and remember in our uh, limits limits of uh, the limits of exponential function we have the property where the limit of e to the power of t uh, we have e to the power of t minus 1 over t as the limit uh, t approaches 0 is equivalent to 1 okay, that is the property that's why it's 1 here and then we'll get e to the power of x limit e to the power of x which is just e to the power of x and if we generalize we have now the derivative of e the power of u equals e to the power of u du dx let's proceed to the next proof uh, we have a to the power of x what if it's not actually e it's just a positive number so we have the derivative of a to the power of x okay so we'll do some algebra magic here okay so uh, remember if we have e 
to the power of ln of x I'm trying to write it properly we have e to the power of ln of x this is just the same as x it's actually one of the properties of exponential functions uh, exponential and logarithmic functions especially in natural logarithm okay so that's why a is just e to the power of ln of a okay and we use that idea here and now since we have x outside using our our properties of exponents or loss of exponent we know that we just simply multiply ln of a to x okay, take note it's not multiplied to a but rather to the entire function ln of a okay and then uh, we have e to the power of ln of a of x this is a derivative of e to the power of u so remember we have we can now get the derivative of e to the power of u here where our u is ln of a times x so it's just actually e ln of a times the derivative of the exponent which is ln of a times x so let's erase the board first and then continue and we know that the derivative of ln of a times x is just 1 why is it 1? Uh, first, we can take out ln of a because ln of a is a constant. So take note, a is a base, a constant, it can be any constant. So ln of a is also a constant. So we have ln of a here. Hence, we are left with the derivative of x with respect to x, which is 1. And we simplify further. So we have this. So we're going to uh, reverse Okay, we're going to reverse the process. So we have a to the power of x because again, e to the power of ln of a is just a. That's why we have a to the power of x. ln of a. So if we try to generalize, instead of x, let's have u as a function or the exponent. So we have the derivative of a to the power of u equals a to the power of u ln of a du dx next we have the differentiation rules for logarithmic functions we have d17 and d18 so just like uh, d16 and d15 exponential functions we have two for logarithmic functions and we have ln of u which is the counterpart of the natural number e we have ln of u natural logarithm of u equals 1 over u times d u dx okay so let's have an example uh, if we're given ln of 2x plus 1 so we'll have 1 over 2x plus 1 so because it's just u whatever is inside the parenthesis are the argument well this one is the argument here this is u that's uh, that's the denominator so we have 1 over 2x plus 1 times the derivative of u which is 2x plus 1 and this will give us 2 so we simplify we have 2 over 2x plus 2 so again we simply have uh, 1 over u du dx then for the log, so it's not anymore the natural logarithm, but the log itself to the base a uh, of u, we have 1 over u ln of a times du dx. So example, if we have log of 2x plus 1 to the base 2, so take note our a here is 2, so we'll have 1 over 2x plus 1. So quantity 2x plus 1, this is our u, times ln of a. So again, our a is 2, so ln of 2, times a derivative of 2x plus 1, because of chain rule. Uh, we have 2 for this derivative here. And if we simplify, 
we have 2 over ln of 2 times the quantity of 2x plus 1. So again, ln of 2 is a constant. So uh, by convention, we put it at the leftmost part. Okay. Now let's have the proof for uh, logarithmic functions. So let's start with ln of x, the derivative of ln of x. And we will use the limit definition for this scenario because we still don't have the basis for ln of x yet. And we have ln of x plus h minus ln of x. And okay, so how did this happen? So remember that if we have ln of a minus ln of b, we have this uh, property of logarithms. It's just ln of a over b. Okay, so that's why we have this here in the numerator. And then we can actually separate uh, 1h, 1 over h rather, from ln of 1 plus h over x. Okay, so the reason of doing this because we want to use this property here. Okay, so uh, remember the 1 over h here, so the factor here using the properties of logarithms becomes the exponent of the argument here. Okay, so that's why we have 1 over h here. Okay, so now why did I uh, intend to have this form here? It's because I want to have an expression which will make the ln here, or the natural log here, uh, be cancelled out. And we can only do that by having the natural number e inside ln. Okay, because we have this ln of e, this is just 1. Okay, so my goal is to have an expression inside inside b equal to e and trying to look at the pattern here this is actually almost uh, similar to this limit here so limit of n approaches zero we have one plus n to the power of one over n uh, this is equivalent to e so we have this identity also and uh, you can search it. I'll just put the link below that uh, the proof for the limit of one of one plus n to the power of one over e as n approaches one over n as n approaches zero is actually e. I'll just put, put it in the description. Okay, so how how are we going to have an e or the natural number there? We can start with equating h over x to n so i want this one to be simply n okay so uh if we simplify that further okay so the reason i simplify that because i want one over h to be in terms of one over n and x okay i want to have a variable n and x because that's our goal here instead of having h so yes we can do this so also take note that if h is approaching 0, this implies that n approaches 0 also because that's how we uh, created this relationship as n approaches 0, so do h become 0 because the only way for this relationship to become 0 is if the numerator h is 0. Okay, so we substitute n. So we have, instead of h over x, we have now n here. And instead of 1 over h, we have 1 over n times 1 over x from the previous okay, from the previous solution here. Okay, so, okay, now take note. We have now this. We have the limit of 1 plus n to the power of 1 over n. And again, uh, we have stated that the limit of that expression 1 plus n to the power of 1 over n or function rather as n approaches 0 is actually e 
That's why we have now ln of e. Okay, and what is ln of e? Uh, it's actually 1. So take note that 1 over x here, using the properties of ln, was actually put here. So again, uh, if we have x ln of a, this is just the same as ln of a to the power of x. So that's why we can do this. Okay, and ln of e is simply 1. That's why we have 1 over x. Okay, which is, if we generalize, we have the derivative of ln of u equals 1 over u times du dx. Okay, so let's continue. Next, we have the proof of log. Okay, so we're done with the natural log. Let's have logarithm to the base a of x. So, okay, so we have now here log of x to the base e and log of x to the base a. So what's the reason? Why can we write log of a to the x? Okay, so take note that there is a property in logarithms. We call that one as the change of base. Change of so change of base and it states that if we have log of n to the base m we can actually rewrite this as a log of any base okay so you can have any base you can have 2 you can have 10 you can have 3 so and then uh, whatever is inside the argument in this case the n that will be our numerator while the base our former base will be in the denominator okay. if we try if you try to uh, check try to substitute the values there it will just give you the same uh, values here in the left okay so that's how we apply the change of base property of logarithm so take note we have log to the base e and we know that log to the base e is simply the natural logarithm so we have ln of x over ln of a. So I hope that you see the pattern here. So uh, the reason why we are using ln here is because we have already proven ln first. So we are going to apply now the things that we have learned about uh, ln of x. Okay, so take note that ln of a here is a constant. Okay, so that's why we can apply constant multiple rule and we write 1 over ln of a because it's in the denominator and then simply get the derivative of what's remaining inside which is ln of x and what's the derivative of ln of x we have 1 over x and we can simplify further we have 1 over x ln of a okay and if we try to generalize we have this a derivative of log of u to the base a equals 1 over u so actually it's still the same it's 1 over u uh, the only thing that's added is ln of a because of the nature of our given being a logarithm so we have ln of a du dx okay so in the next video we are going to discuss the last part of the derivatives we have the derivatives of inverse functions See you in the next video. Bye-bye.